Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated 5,000 babies saved through the ministry of Cities for Life here in Charlotte. But is it biblical to keep track of numbers, or is it just prideful? And what are the benefits and some of the downsides of keeping track of numbers? Join us as we look at this from a gospel-centered perspective. I felt your passion, touched your heart. Welcome to the Gospel Center Pro-Life Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about numbers. We've recently, as a ministry, celebrated 5,000 babies saved. Mm -hmm. We praise God for that. We had a little celebration here with our volunteers at the office and celebrated what God has done yeah. since uh, since actually before Cities for Life got started. Right. Um, some folks started keeping numbers back in 2008. Mm -hmm. Cities for Life got started officially in 2010. But a lot of those folks that were keep, keeping numbers are part of the original Cities for Life crew. Right. Anyway, we counted 5,000 babies that have been saved in that period of time mm -hmm. here in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanted to do a podcast to celebrate that, but also to ask the question, um, is it really biblical to keep numbers? Mm -hmm. Is it really something that we should do as a ministry? Mm -hmm. I know for me personally, before, um, you know, I'd been out at Latrobe, the Latrobe Abortion Clinic since 2005, and really did not uh, see the need to keep the numbers of babies that were saved. Mm -hmm. And sort of, I guess, you know, I, I guess I wanted to view it as, as like humility, like, mm -hmm. oh, we don't need to keep track of the numbers and, mm -hmm. and all of that. And uh, I think it was really more pride, though. <laughs> it was almost like, uh, you know, I'm so, we're so awesome and so, so humble. So, you know, this is like this, <laughs> this prideful humility. We're so <laughs> humble. We don't need to keep track of numbers because it doesn't, God knows, you know, sort of that mentality. Right. And, uh, you know, I regret not having kept track of those numbers mm -hmm. because there were, you know, there were some Saturdays at that time, Saturdays were the busiest day where we would see, you know, three, four, five babies saved in one Saturday. We yeah. just didn't, you know, people would ask how many babies have been saved over the past so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And be like, oh, I don't know. And I almost would say it with pride. Oh, I don't have a clue, but God knows, you know. Numbers don't matter. Yeah, m numbers don't matter. Our obedience is yeah, all that our matters. Yeah, our obedience. Mm -hmm. And you know what? So we're going to talk through some of that in mm -hmm. this podcast because there are some mentalities. And I think it, you know, maybe there's ditches on both sides, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, where we take pride mm -hmm. in the numbers and all of this, or we take pride in not keeping track of numbers. Right. You know, ultimately, you know, I think we'll start the same way that we'll end. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's God that does the baby saving. It's mm -hmm. God that does opening hearts. It's God that does the saving. It's not us. So we have to acknowledge that. Right. And if we acknowledge that and we keep in that vein, then I think we can guard ourselves against being prideful. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there are some things that really irk me mm -hmm. in, you know, in Christianity in pro-life ministry that have to do with numbers. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do not like, you know, if anybody, you know, if you work for a pregnancy center and you, you use this method to raise money and stuff, uh, I'm not, you know, do what you do before the Lord. Okay, but I do not like, when like pregnancy centers especially, talk about numbers and talk about, you know, we saw this many babies saved and this is how much it takes to save a baby. So, mm. you know, if you give us... You know, whatever it is, I don't know what the amount. X are. amount of numbers uh, and X that baby amount will and, be and saved. That'll save that a baby. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, no. Now that's a personal. You know, I'm not saying I don't like it, and here's what the scripture says about not mm -hmm. doing that, because mm -hmm. I don't know if any scripture immediately comes to mind that mm -hmm. that says, you know, don't don't. I just don't like the idea of putting a price tag on a right. you know save a right. baby for whatever a yeah. hundred dollars yeah. or whatever that that irks me. Yeah. Could be a personal thing, mm -hmm. but I think it's I, I think mm -hmm. it's. Uh, the Lord in me right. <laughs> that doesn't like that right. could be wrong about that though. But also, like I said, there's a ditch on both sides and there's mm -hmm. this idea that, you know, numbers don't matter. Mm -hmm. It does all that matters is obedience. Mm -hmm. And, and on its face, that's true. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about some of that and some of the, the points that we're going to talk through here on that, on its face, that's true. We're called to be obedient. And we've talked about this in other podcasts. We'll continue to talk about this. We're called to be obedient 
whether the numbers are there or not. The mm-hmm. Bible tells us, open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed mm-hmm. to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, plead the cause of the poor and needy, period. It doesn't say plead the cause of the poor and needy uh, unless you produce so many babies being saved and this and that and this and that. Then right? you can go take a break. Then you can take a break or, <laughs> right. or you know, you can't take a break, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So we're called to obedience. We're called to obey the Lord. We're called to proclaim the gospel. But within that call, as we see, you know, in particular, the call of proclaiming the gospel, there is going to be fruit that's going to be born. Mm -hmm. There are going to be souls that are saved. Mm -hmm. And I think we do see, if, you know, if we look at this thing biblically, do numbers matter? If we look at it biblically, you have an entire book of the Bible (laughs) called Numbers. We have that in our Bibles. Right. It's in the Old Testament. If if you don't know, it's one of the five books of Moses, right? Yeah. And uh, so numbers do matter. In Obviously, a sense. or God wouldn't have inspired a book of numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, of course, we know the book of Numbers is not just about uh, tallying numbers of of although people. A lot of it is. Although a lot <laughs> of it is. Yeah, I mean that's the bulk of it is is lineages and mm-hmm. and those sort of things. Mm-hmm. But read the passage you've got. Okay. Um, you've got written down here from Numbers mm-hmm. that has to do with well, Numbers. Well, it was pretty interesting when you contacted me and said, hey, wh- what do you think? Would this be a good topic? Do, do numbers matter to God? Yeah. And that was the day, I think, or the next day. I started in my daily Bible reading. It just happened to be just starting the so book. so happened, exactly. air quotes. <laughs> started to be read in the book of numbers and the book of numbers is honestly my least favorite book uh-huh. i mean I, yeah. it's filled with numbers it is. And, 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 and you're numbers. not a numbers person right? no well, i don't either. love numbers but but god numbered everything uh-huh. he numbered the people he numbered the utensils used in service to him he gave exact numbers in the building of the temple i mean numbers are and numbers have special meaning yeah, sure. numbers are often symbolic throughout the bible so numbers clearly matter to him yeah so here was i thought um a great verse just to start us off we're going to go into a lot of verses yeah. uh, over the course of of this podcast but this is numbers 4 46 to 49. Okay. All those who were listed of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the chiefs of Israel listed by their clans and their father's houses, from 30 years old up to 50 years old, everyone who could come to do the service of ministry and the service of bearing burdens in the tent of meeting, those listed were 8,580. According to the commandments of the Lord through Moses, they were listed, each one with his task of serving or carrying. Thus they were listed by him as the Lord commanded Moses. Yeah. So some really critical concepts. Yeah, absolutely. Moses was commanded by God yeah. to list them. Yeah. They were to be listed, all of those that were basically of eligible service age, mm-hmm. were to be listed not only to number how many of those would be called to serve God, but the task, it also listed that they would be called to do for yeah. God. So um, so that's, a, I think, a great place to, to start, that, yeah, that numbers, numbers were... Yeah. were important and used. Yeah, and then, you know, the the context that we're talking about um, and what brought this to mind for me was that we've seen 5,000 babies saved as a ministry. And, you know, is it biblical for to, us to keep track of those numbers? Mm-hmm. And is it prideful? I mean, mm-hmm. to me, that would be my main concern. Am I being prideful? Mm-hmm. Because I don't, you know, our goal is not to draw attention to us, it's to draw, draw attention to the Lord. Mm-hmm. But when the Lord gives you a platform and he gives you a ministry, you want to make sure you're being fruitful too. So numbers right. are a way for us to, to to gauge fruitfulness, and we'll get into a little bit of that here in just a minute. Yeah. But, you know, you do have also, you know, as we're thinking about ministry and we're thinking about, you know, I mean, we look at numbers of people that are coming to the abortion clinics. Yeah. Um, we need to look at at those numbers and, and the people that are flooding into that place mm-hmm. and then figure out as a ministry, okay, how many people do we need as volunteers out there on the sidewalk? Mm-hmm. You know, that's something mm-hmm. we're constantly looking at, yep. trying to raise up more numbers of people to be out there mm-hmm. um, so that we can be as effective as mm-hmm. possible reaching those people. Because, you know, as well as I do, if you're on the sidewalk there and it's just you and another person 
And you've got a flood of sometimes, you know, like on a Monday or a Friday, which are some of the busiest days, sometimes right. even on a Saturday, it's yeah. busy. When you've got 40 or 50 people coming in, it's just yeah. two of you. Right. I mean, numbers do matter for sure there. Yeah. Right. You're, yeah. you're like overwhelmed. Now, we take confidence in the Lord. It's mm-hmm. not about the numbers of people. That, you know, the Lord can save by few and by many. So, mm-hmm. you know, we have to balance this idea that, yeah, we need more people out there on the sidewalk with this source, of course, biblical idea that we've got to trust in the Lord. Yeah. So we're not yeah. trusting in numbers. And, and I think that would be the, that would be the issue is yeah. if our trust is in mm-hmm. numbers, if, if our trust is in having a number of people out there on the sidewalk or our trust is in having a number of babies saved and that somehow yeah. makes us better than someone else yeah. or makes us more <laughs> more special to God or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So you've just listed so far two things that are a trap of numbers yeah. and the, that's pride and trust. Yeah. Our pride can't be in those numbers and our trust can't be in those numbers. Yeah. But numbers do serve a, a, a useful purpose. And God says where two or three are gathered in my name. So we know that numbers matter, that they that he does want us yeah. to gather more than just one. And then he sent people out to ministry in twos, yeah. right? And they uh-huh. had to be a minimum of, of two. And we do that even just for accountability, safety purposes, um, someone to videotape if, if something yeah. terrible happens. So again, those numbers are, are, are important. Yeah, absolutely. But um, here's a quote from Eugene Peterson, who... Um, uh, a, theologian i think is or a commentator bible commentator and he writes in the in his introduction to the book of numbers we need organization organizational help when people live together in community jobs have to be assigned leaders appointed inventories kept counting and listing and rosters are as much a part of being a community of god as prayer and instruction and justice accurate arithmetic is an aspect of becoming a people of God. So I think he lists some of the positive reasons for numbers yeah. in, in the book of numbers itself. So, and, and the book of numbers is a, a an accounting of the soldiers for the Lord, the rosters and results of battles. I mean, he does talk about the results of the battles, which in a sense is what we're doing, right? When we're out on the sidewalk and we're recording the numbers of, of babies saved, that's like tabulating, in a sense, the results of, of a battle, yeah, of the spiritual absolutely. battle that day. Yeah. So You know, there's some, <laughs> just one scripture that came to mind for me, and I was actually looking for it while you were talking. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of a funny scripture about numbers to me. I mean, okay. maybe there's some depth to this thing. Uh-huh. So maybe just for, for me, for a little bit of comic relief, okay. talking about numbers. Because it is interesting. A little bit of a rabbit trail. It's, it's interesting how often the Bible mentions obscure numbers and just numbers of things and, and mm-hmm. things that are tabulated, like you, like you mentioned there in the Numbers passage, and there's other places where things are numbered and things are counted and all this. And I think in one sense it shows us the the way that God is pretty thorough in His yeah. Word and the way yeah. that God's people are pretty thorough and He calls us to be thorough. And also the way that just you know, this is a practical book. The Bible's yeah. a practical book. And, and it's historical. And, yeah, it's I historical. mean, He actually counted and we've got the it. actual numbers yeah. and, you know, that shows, I think, that gives you a greater um, proof that He was accurately recording history. Exactly, yeah. And so this passage uh-huh. is where something funny is numbered to me. Okay, where is this? And it's this? a funny number. This is uh, John 21. Okay. And this is uh, the story of... So it's after the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples have gone on to go back to fishing, and you know maybe there's some messages out there about why they did this and that, whatever. But Jesus is on the shore. He sees them. They don't recognize him. He tells them to cast their nets. They cast their nets, and when they get a miraculous catch of fish, that's when Peter realizes, oh, it's the Lord, and he jumps into the water. Anyway, it says here in uh, uh, John 21 and verse 11. Mm-hmm. Is it 11? Yeah, verse 11. Simon Peter, Peter went up and dragged the net to the land full of large fish, 153. So not just a round number of 150. <laughs> around 150. Yeah, nope. around 150. No, it's 153. 153. So you have to ask yourself, like, okay, why did John record the exact number of fish? Mm-hmm. Why 153? And I'm sure there's theories out there. I'm sure probably this number does have some kind of biblical significance right. and some kind of 
underlying meaning. And I don't think we should question at all that there were exactly 153 fish. I mean, there's no reason to believe there wasn't because it's God's word, right? Um, but it's funny to me, 153 fish. Yeah. Why not just around 150? Why right. didn't it just say, you know, they caught 100 or, you know, some measurement of the day or whatever? Why did they have like, to count them at all? It's yeah. something that I'm wondering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I think it does speak to this, the nature of God and his word being pretty thorough with keeping track of numbers and keeping well, track of even catches of fish. And in this passage, I think it relates even very directly to what we're talking about because, again, it's a result. It's yeah. a result of God's command. They were obedient, and presumably Jesus was there as they're counting the fish. If that was, like, not to be done, yeah. <laughs> if we were just supposed to say, well, we were obedient to you, Lord, who cares how yeah, many who cares fish how many there fish? are? Yeah. But, but he apparently approved of them counting the fish, and they gave an exact count. Yeah, of, at this point, this is fish. this is where he tells them, he gives them some specific instructions, cast your net on the right side of the boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they did, and uh, and they caught that multitude, 153 fish. Anyway, to me, that's that's when I read that passage, I'm like, wow, Lord, you're pretty thorough. That's that's a that's a funny number. Um, that's a lot of fish, too, by the it's way. It's a lot of fish, <laughs> because they were probably big fish. Those were yeah, big well, fish. Yeah, well, it says large <laughs> fish. <laughs> right. It says 153. Right. It was large right. fish, and there were 153 right. of them. And they ate right away some of those fish, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. seems. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to point that well, out. Well, I don't think fun. that's a rabbit trail at all. Actually, okay. I think cool. that's the most pivotal verse, even of all the ones I gathered all of this, right. because it's very clear. God gave a command. The command was obeyed. Mm-hmm. There were results. And there was a counting yeah. of the results. Yeah. Not for pride. But I think... Why? I think that's a great question. Why? And I think, I don't know all the answers of why, but one immediate why um, answer that I can think of is it points them back to their obedience to God produced this enormous catch yeah. when they had been been completely unsuccessful yeah. prior to that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you, well, you know, you can look to, and, and I think we need to look at the other side of the coin, too, that there were those in God's Word who were obedient to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, you have Jeremiah the prophet, for example, who was obedient to the Lord Mm -hmm. till the bitter end, Mm -hmm. and, you know, he didn't have very many converts. He didn't, but did God ever say, count your converts? No, he didn't. Probably (laughs) not. Probably for good reason. (laughs) Probably for good reason. Uh, You look look at a man like Noah, for example, who who we know as a shipbuilder and and as Mm -hmm. a guy who obey God and building a boat in the middle of the desert when there had been no rain and right. no reason for a boat. And there he goes right. building that thing for yeah. some folks say a hundred to 120 years that he built this thing. And he didn't, ha- you know, he had the whole known world that he was preaching to. And the only converts he got was really his family. And they were right. pretty reluctant to, to be converts to his cause yeah. as well. Yeah. So we have to weigh out scripturally. Mm-hmm. Obedience does not always translate into, you know, 153 fish. Right. Obedience is where the victory is 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 won. Mm-hmm. We have to obey God whether or not we see results. So, you know, keep yeah. that in your mind, guys, as we're going through this. We're not we're in no way invalidating, you know, yeah. other ministries or, or yeah. men, women of God in the past or whatever who didn't have certain fruit. Yeah. But we do see in the Bible this counting of numbers and yeah. this keeping tracks, keeping track of fruit and that sort of thing. And we're going to talk, you know, right yeah. now about why would you do that? Yeah. What are some of the biblical reasons to do this? And what are some of the results of this? Yeah. And I, I don't want to gloss over, though, I think a really important point you just made that I, I want to repeat because I, I think it is important. Numbers can be damaging to a ministry if they discourage you. Yeah. If you're being faithful, and this does happen in many ministries in all areas, not just pro-life, where you are being faithful and people still die, and people still don't turn to the Lord, or whatever your focus of your ministry is not apparently ever obtained. Yeah. So in that case, to look at numbers um, can harm the ministry. Yeah. So it it is a danger. I think there is an honest danger. Yeah, there is. With with numbers. Yeah, and, and ultimately like the point I made is it boils down to obedience to God. Like right. you, you don't need 
to see numbers if you have yeah. a direct command from the Lord. Like, for example, giving a voice to the unborn. Yeah. If we never saw, and I would hope by God's grace, <laughs> that I would still be faithful to the Lord's call out there on that sidewalk. Yeah. I believe that I would. Yeah. Um, even if we never saw a baby saved. And yeah. we've had days we where there's have. not been baby saved. And when there's you no see doubt it, it's harder. Yeah. It yeah. is harder. It, it is harder. Yeah. Um, but yet still we are going to be obedient to yeah. the Lord, and we're still called to be obedient whether we see the results or not. Yeah. However, I would say, and this is not meant to discourage anyone mm-hmm. at all, but just as a practical and I think even biblical mm-hmm. call, mm-hmm. You know, the Bible commands us continually to examine ourselves. Yeah. And if we're involved in a ministry and we're never seeing positive fruit from that ministry, it does not invalidate that ministry, but it should cause us to make an assessment. Mm-hmm. And it should cause us, you know, if we're involved, if you're involved on the sidewalks at an abortion clinic and you're seeing massive amounts of people going into that abortion clinic and you're never seeing any result, you're never seeing anyone tell you that they chose life or come out and talk with you and have a conversation then I think you do need to validate, or not validate, but at least uh, examine, um, examine mm-hmm. what you're doing. Is what I'm doing biblical? Right. Is what I'm doing, is the, are the things that I'm saying biblical? Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe evaluate that with some other brothers and sisters. And you know, go to your pastor and say, hey, here, I want you to come out with me one day mm-hmm. and just see if what I'm doing, if, if it's honoring the Lord, mm-hmm. if I'm ineffective in some for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um now, I would say this from my experience that, that people, you know, I've you know, got people on social media that I'm connected with that do ministry all over the country. And, you know, maybe there are some more effective than, uh, than others. I don't know. I'm not writing numbers down, engaging all of that. Yeah. But for the most part, what I'm seeing is people are seeing babies saved. They're right. out there right. and God is honoring what they're doing with babies mm-hmm. being saved. And they're kind of, you know, people might look here in Charlotte and say, oh, you guys, you know, you're seeing babies saved every day. And we mm-hmm. are mostly yeah, seeing babies saved are. every day. Yeah. And and we praise God for that. Mm-hmm. Again, we know it's it's God's doing. We give, we him give the glory, glory to Him exactly. for doing that work. Yeah. But also, you know, there like the Hebron abortion clinic that's that's you know twenty minutes down the street from where we're at. Yeah. There's not a lot of interactions and stuff that takes place there. Mm-hmm. There's some difficulties. There's some hurdles that are there that are hard mm-hmm. to navigate through. Not a lot of people come over and talk. We do see babies saved there. Yeah. Uh, from time to time, but you know. There's a sort of a ratio thing too, you know. Here on Latrobe Drive, they're doing you know thirty abortions every day on average, I at think. least. You know, yeah. and there's some yeah. days where they do fifty. Right. You know, at the Hebron Abortion Clinic, their numbers might be ten at the most. Right. right. So that's that's a difference too, and that's yeah. that's sort of a practical thing I, I did mm-hmm. want to mention. Mm-hmm. But also, in, again, the practical uh, point of you know examining things. Because there are ways that I've seen people do ministry in front of an abortion clinic that they, they, they might be, I guess, obedient to God. They go out there saying abortion is murder. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. You mm-hmm. should say abortion is murder. I get mm-hmm. it. But there are those who are going out there with just, I don't know, maybe, and maybe I'm, I'm just viewing it from the outside looking in, with an angry spirit yeah. and angry at abortion. And we mm-hmm. should be. It's terrible. But when you come across and you're on the sidewalk with an angry spirit, don't be surprised if people don't come over and talk to you. Exactly. And I guarantee yeah. you this, though, even you know, if you're if you're proclaiming the truth of God's word, there are probably babies that are being saved, right. and they're just not stopping and telling you. You, you may know, never know. Yeah, about you may it. never know. Yeah, and maybe you're content with that. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know. Right. Whatever. I, yeah. All I'm doing is just throwing some practical things out there, and I think by the end of this podcast, hopefully, you guys who are doing ministry. In you know on the sidewalks to do a ministry in a pregnancy center. If you're not keeping track of numbers, hopefully by the end of this podcast you'll see a good reason to do that. Right. Yeah. And uh, and you'll begin to do that and give glory to God for those numbers. Yeah. So as I was going through, as I w- I've been reading through the book of Numbers, which is um, divine uh, appointment, I think, because yeah. it, it's right during the discussion of this topic. But I was thinking there were four purposes that I thought became apparent to me for why numbers do matter, both to God and to us. And so I'm, I'm going to tell you those four purposes that I came up. You, okay. you may have others. Yeah, um, I'll refute all of those points. Probably, no, probably. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'll give Scripture to support it, because oh. you may be able to refute me, but Scripture— I can't refute you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, so the purpose number one, and I think we would all agree with this one, honestly, even okay. you, yeah. numbers encourage God's people. Yeah. If they're big, Mm -hmm. if they're small, maybe not so much. Maybe not so much. (laughs) (laughs) But that 5,000th number of babies saved, 
that was an enormous encouragement to yeah. me. I got the text the day that the 5,000th baby was saved. And it's, you know, it, it, every baby matters. Yeah, every absolutely. single life is precious beyond belief. But the sheer number that 5,000 babies are saved in a place where most people think no decisions for life are ever going to be made. Yeah. That's an amazing encouragement yeah. to those of us who labor in the pro-life area. Yeah. So here's um here's a verse that I think supports that that numbers can encourage God's people. Okay. It's 1 Kings 19:18 is one of my favorite books in the Bible and one of my favorite chapters by okay. the way. I love this chapter. Um, so this verse is, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Yeah. So do you want to give the background of that? Do you know that? that was well, this where, is the passage with Elijah. Right, and, and the false uh, idol of yeah, Baal. Yeah, and, and the worshipers of Baal, and, mm-hmm. and Elijah has what some folks call the Elijah mentality uh-huh. <laughs> based on this passage. Uh-huh. That I'm the only one. Right. Like God, where's it, where's all your people? Everyone mm-hmm. has departed from from you, and I'm the only person mm-hmm. that's righteous. Yeah, and you know I've I've seen that <laughs> is from people on social media on Facebook who are doing ministry at abortion clinics, right. and and right. There's where's everyone? Says, where's the church at? And I get it. You know, <laughs> yeah. for, for years, you know, I was out in front of uh, Latrobe here and others, but just a handful of people, and there's like 1,300 churches in the greater Charlotte area, and right. we're wondering. Where's all these churches? Right. There are you know, millions of Christians around in this area, right. hundreds of thousands of Christians. I don't know about millions, but like, where are they at? And it can be discouraging, and I get that. And we can have the Elijah mentality. You know, mm-hmm. I'm the only one. I'm the only mm-hmm. person in the you know Charlotte area that cares about the unborn. Mm-hmm. And you know, God, <laughs> this is sort of a rebuke, actually, mm-hmm. to Elijah. This is mm-hmm. not just an encouragement. Mm-hmm. This is a rebuke. Now, mm-hmm. hopefully. Um, and I think in one sense, Elijah did take this as an encouragement. Yeah. Um, but, and so hopefully it was an encouragement to him, but again, it was also a rebuke there. You know, you're not the only person that's standing for righteousness. You're not the only person that's doing what is right in the sight of God. He has other people right. that has, that have dedicated themselves to him and not bowed their knee to, to the idol. That's right. And he named it. He named the number and it was a and he large gave him, number. He gave him a number. He 7, said, I have 7,000. Right, and so I think Elisha was encouraged. He he knew he was he was not alone, um, and and those seven thousand. I think of those um, also as uh, the fruit of of ministry because those seven thousand probably had parents, other people telling them about the one true God. And they obviously are following the one true God, or God yeah, wouldn't have mentioned absolutely. them. So they are both an encouragement as fellow warriors, but I think we could also look to them as an encouragement of the fruit yeah. of, of, of other faithful yeah, people and, of and God. And some of those, you know, could be fruit of Elijah's ministry as the prophet of Israel. Too. Very much you know, like They had heard yeah. Elijah preach, maybe. Yeah. They'd have heard, heard of some of Elijah's prophecies and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. And they were the fruit of his ministry. Quite possibly. Right. And one of the reasons I love this passage so much and that chapter so much is Elisha had just had this enormous victory when he says this. Yeah. He had had a huge victory over the prophets of Baal. And and the immediate response to that huge victory was discouragement. Yeah. And I th- and 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 that discouragement, I believe, comes from Satan to to discourage him and all of us in ministry yeah. to no longer continue in ministry. So by God naming this large number, it it reminded him that that be encouraged. Yeah, be, absolutely. You know, there there are others and there is fruit yeah, of, yeah. of your ministry. Yeah, no, locally one of the encouragements for us, um, you know, months, months ago when we first started this podcast, I did an interview with Justin Reeder who started Love Life. Right. And we've talked about them oftentimes on the podcast. Yeah. And those guys, you know, their first year in doing the prayer walks in front of the abortion clinic, when yeah. they did their final prayer walk of the year, I think it was, two, it was 2016, I remember coming up on that stage mm-hmm. and looking across that crowd of mm-hmm. 4,000 people yeah. and just being overwhelmed. You know, right. haven't been out there in front of the of Latrobe for, for so long and wondering where is the church, yeah. it was like that was God's answer. Here they are. Yeah. We have thousands of people, yeah. and could there be more? Sure, yeah. you know there could be more. Mm-hmm. But 
I could be encouraged by that number. Mm-hmm. I could be discouraged. I could, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like like the Christian, the grave is never satisfied. You know, yeah. like some Christians yeah. just will never be satisfied yeah. with, you know, with what God's doing. And, I, you know, I'm I'm just thankful that God's doing that. So, yeah. and that was a great encouragement to me. Mm-hmm. It was a great encouragement to you. Oh, I yeah. Know. yeah. And, uh, and so you know, numbers can be a, a great encouragement right. to us. And I yeah. think God designs it that way. Yeah, I, there have been many, many days this happened just, uh, it actually happened today where we knew that there had been babies saved, but they were not confirmed. We knew from other clues. Yeah. But then right as we're getting ready to leave, so I'd been out there over four hours. It was cold. Yeah. Kind of a bitter cold day. cold day. I know. And, um, Considering like the weather was not, <laughs> was not calling for it to be that cold. No, it yeah. wasn't. But I, I, I was shivering. All of us were. And at, at like one o'clock, a, a mom pulled out of the um, the driveway and the abortionist had already arrived. And she told us she chose life. Mm-hmm. And that 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 was one verified baby that was saved. And, and we all just started dancing and yeah. leaping for joy and the cold didn't matter. So you know, just, just being able to count one that we knew for certain was, was an encouragement. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, purpose number two, purpose number two, All this right. is the one you'll probably have the greatest, um, argument about. Okay. I'll have a problem with this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Probably for my wording, but I, it was the best I could do. Okay. Okay. Numbers validate ministry for raising support. Okay. Okay, and here's here's the verse that I I threw in with that. It's from well some verses Acts two verses forty one to forty seven. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about three thousand souls, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So this is God, they counted the number of, yeah. of souls saved. They mm-hmm. must have because they knew there were about 3,000. Yeah. The Lord added to their number. He was clearly pleased by that. But it spurred them on. All of these people being um, saved, I think we could make the argument that they were selling their possessions and distributing the proceeds to all, to everyone who had need. They're coming together and eating together and breaking bread together. Um as part of well, there there's all these people that have that um, are the fruit of our work, and now we need to minister to them. So it helps yeah. to spur more efforts at ministry, okay. seeing all this fruit. That's my take on it. Yeah, well, it's it's not a bad take. <laughs> I, you know, I would have a problem with the idea of numbers validating ministry right. for the same reason I mentioned earlier. You know, yeah. it's it's God that validates ministry, and how does God validate ministry? Well, ministry needs to be based on his word. That's right. And so if ministry, if if a ministry is not based on his word, that ministry is invalidated immediately, Mm -hmm. right? So if there's a ministry, pro-life or whatever ministry, missionary ministry, whatever, Mm -hmm. that's not validated by God's word, like they're doing things that are completely unbiblical in a framework that's completely unbiblical, then they've invalidated themselves. I don't care what their fruit is. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. I want to know, is what you're doing in line with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Can you show me Scripture that backs up what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing? If you can't, then in my mind, you've invalidated yourself. (laughs) And God's not validated you. Yeah. Um, So in that sense, I'll say it's not the numbers that validate. Mm -hmm. It's God that validates. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will say, because, you know, you put in there and raising support. And you're not just talking about financial support. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about people actually, you know, talking about the ministry verbally, that's support. That's mm-hmm. encouraging other people to be involved and that sort of thing. Um, you know, maybe particularly about financial support. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm looking, this is something I mentioned before we even started the podcast here, is that, um, you know, if I'm looking at, let's say, two missionary 
groups. Let's say they're missionary organizations, and there's two of them. And they're both missionary organizations in India. Mm -hmm. And both of those missionary organizations, I look at their statement of faith, I look at their framework of ministry, and it looks thoroughly biblical on both ends, right? right? But one's more effective in establishing churches and, and seeing people converted and seeing people discipled. Yeah. And I've got money and I've got a burden for India. Yeah. I'm gonna probably give money to the to the one that's more effective. Right. 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 There's there's both are doing biblical work. Mm-hmm. Both are validated biblically. Mm-hmm. But one's more effective. Mm-hmm. One's you know, producing you know, and I can verify those numbers are true or whatever. Yeah. Then I'm gonna give money to the more effective group. It, yeah. it would almost be unwise to unless you know, explicitly the Holy Spirit put it in my heart to give to the other right. <laughs> the other ministry. Right. I'm going to give to the more effective ministry. Yeah, well, something even in terms of giving to ministries where numbers can help is I will look through, well, does this ministry, what percentage of this ministry goes to the actual whatever the ministry is, yeah. what goes to administration, what goes to supplies, what goes to lavish vacations for your yeah, exactly. <laughs> for your CEO, <laughs> you know, and those numbers help you to make wise decisions on what is the best use of limited resources. And I think that's true of our volunteers or any any person thinking, who am I going to volunteer with? Yeah. I think sometimes knowing the, the effectiveness helps people to determine, I will go and volunteer with them. I know that was what happened with me. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I know I've said this before on the podcast, I didn't know that, that, that a single person ever came to an abortion center undecided right, and actually yeah. chose life. I, and so I was shocked when I started reading the numbers. And it was the numbers of the baby saved every day that was being reported on Facebook by Lisa Metzger. Mm-hmm. And um, and that, to me, may, I became very interested because it it was clearly a ministry that was producing fruit in the only way I knew how to count the fruit of a pro-life ministry were babies being saved yeah yeah so um so that's that's what we mean or what i meant saying numbers validate ministry for raising support i think it it helps us to it's not the only validation it's not even really a validation it's not the primary validation right for sure right i think in one sense yeah you could say it is it is a validation yeah for sure but it helps give wisdom to those who are seeking what what ministry to support financially or with their time and yeah volunteer and you know of course this is acts chapter two this is right after peter you know the holy spirit fell the day of pentecost and yeah. peter gets up and preaches is one of the most powerful sermons ever preached and right. it wasn't a seeker friendly service no it wasn't he wasn't tickling the people's ears he yeah. basically laid the crucifixion of jesus christ on yeah. the people and said this christ whom you crucified god right. has made both lord and christ yeah and so and it says they were cut to the heart yeah and they were convicted of their sin they, what yeah. must we do to be saved he, he, he doesn't you know he didn't say, well, just repeat after me. And, you know, he, he really gets down to it. Be baptized. This Jesus that you guys crucified, you need to be baptized in his name right now. Yeah. <laughs> and look at how many yeah. were it's, saved. Yes, 3,000. 3,000. Th- uh, 3, so, so it's in, like, Brother Peter, you had a mega church at that time. And then you <laughs> got to look at Peter, If it, at least me. Uh-huh. I, I then look at that, and I look at Peter, and I look at what did he do? Or what did he have? What did the Holy Spirit encourage out of him? Mm-hmm. Because. I want that. I'm yeah. going to, if if my desire is to bring people to the Lord, I'm going to look at the person that brings a lot of people yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. That may or may not be necessarily always true. There may be like Jeremiah, the prophet yeah. Jeremiah, who, yeah. but he was called the weeping prophet. He did not have a happy life. He yeah. was sad. He, yeah. he, he was, was sad, he was yeah. very discouraged. But he was, he was but he happy was in the Lord and yeah. faithful in yeah, the Lord. He was faithful. You know, I'd say, you know, if you look at the population of Jerusalem at this time, and you talk yeah. about, you just said earlier, you know, Peter had a mega church. You know, yeah. <laughs> I've heard people disparage mega churches and I understand there, there's a lot of goofiness and, mm-hmm. and mega churches may not be mm-hmm. the most biblical model, but I've, I've sort of I guess tongue in cheek mentioned, you know, in Book of Acts chapter two, there was a mega church because if you look at the population <laughs> yeah. of Jerusalem, mm-hmm. you know, it couldn't have been more. I read some estimates that were, you know, there were twenty thousand people. I think that's way low. I don't think that's the case. Yeah. And some folks say there were up to, you know, two hundred thousand people in Jerusalem mm-hmm. around that time, mm-hmm. around the time of the apostles or whatever. Yeah. Either way, whether two hundred thousand or you know, if it's twenty thousand people, he had more than ten percent of the population <laughs> turning right. to the Lord. Yeah, you know. 
Um, I would say the more accurate number is probably around, I don't know, 100,000 or so people lived in Jerusalem. Of course, there were others who visited Jerusalem, whatever. Yeah. Either way, in comparison, yeah. I mean, he probably, that you know, the comparison maybe ratio today, 3,000 people in that day would be more like 20,000 today right. as far as yeah. having people together worshiping the Lord. Yeah. Either way, massive fruit was born from this uh, message that Peter preached. And of course, it was because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. So yeah. if you want anything, yeah. so you, you, you want to know anything, well, what did Peter do? Yeah. You know, how did he do this? Yeah. It wasn't him. Right. <laughs> it's like what we said in the beginning. Yeah. It was the Holy Spirit in him, right. the Spirit of God. So you want to know how to be effective like Peter? Yeah. Surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit. That's right. Get to know God more through his word and yeah. find out what he what he requires of you and just yeah. bow your heart to him. Lord, make me like Jesus. That's right. what Peter, that's right. the mentality he had. Right. Make me like Jesus, the, not like Peter. And the evidence of that in this case clearly was there was yeah. enormous fruit. Absolutely. And it was counted. Yeah, So <laughs> it was. Numbers right. did matter in that case. They, they yeah. really did. Okay, purpose number three. I think this is very true and very important. Numbers shock us out of complacency. Yeah. And here I'm specifically talking about the number of abortions yeah so. and this is sort of maybe in one sense we've talked about the positive side mm-hmm. the numbers that were saved and those mm-hmm. numbers can encourage people and all that but then again the number you mentioned here the number of lives that were lost yeah what is it 65 million yes, is what they point, estimate that, that's now. the estimate yeah 65 million and that's just numbers that we've been able to track i mean and a lot of we, states don't report some so states it, don't report it's probably some much states higher. i'm sure under report mm-hmm. um so, yeah, and of course you got to look at the potential of abortions that have happened with, you know, maybe this is a subject, this is definitely a subject for another time, but birth control and the morning right. after pill and right. all of that. Yeah. It's probably much higher than that. Probably. But the number that we have, 65 million plus, yeah. should be a number that that shakes us out of our complacency. It should. Yeah. And I've got, um, again, another one of my favorite uh, passages in Scripture as, as support for this. This okay. is from the book of Jonah, Jonah 4, 9 to 11. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, Yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle. Yeah, so the Lord is laying a number on Jonah here and saying this number, I mean, I'm grieved. You're grieved over this plant. I'm grieved over these lost people who don't know their right hand from their left hand. Right. Who don't know up from down. Who God and, had sent Jonah yeah, to, absolutely. to share the truth of, of the one true God with, and, and initially he refused. Yeah. And now he's complaining about this one plant that was had grown up as shade, and God, yeah. God took that away to make a very significant point about there's a lot of people yeah. that need that need me. Yeah. And and your concern is over your shade. Yeah. Instead of those hundred twenty thousand people yeah. that will perish forever for all. Yeah, eternity. and he gives you know, he gives a number, a large mm-hmm. number, of course. Mm-hmm. In that in that day, you know, hundred and twenty thousand people in mm-hmm. one city. Yeah. And yeah. God's grieved over that and yeah. numbers matter to him yeah. in this sense. Yeah. And and Jonah presumably had become complacent. To the yeah, fate of absolutely. well, we know he did. He mm-hmm. he refused at first to to share the truth of God with those people as he he'd been commanded. So God kind of shocks Jonah out of his self pity and complacency. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that in history that we use, and you know, we're talking about something like the Holocaust, right? The sheer yeah. numbers of people. Yeah, it's not that every life, every individual life doesn't matter they do every life does matter but when you talk about the sheer numbers of people that were killed in the holocaust or you know you look at at communism how many people in the 20th century have been killed under it's like a hundred million people have been murdered under communism in just recent history yeah those numbers are are staggering and should be staggering and they should shake us out of any kind of complacency Mm -hmm. as it pertains to what we're trying to allow in this country yeah uh, with socialism which is just a gateway to communism mm-hmm. 
Um, this is not a political podcast, but <laughs> I just had but to mention that. But guess where you stand? <laughs> yeah, guess where I stand on this? I stand on <laughs> communism's bad because it's killed 120 million people, and we right. don't want to touch that thing. We don't right. want to be anywhere near <laughs> yeah. what communism is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But numbers shock us, they and they do. should shock Those us. Those large numbers. Um, here's purpose number four. Okay. Um, numbers mobilize warriors for the battle. Okay. So Second Chronicles 32, 7, 8 is the scripture that I, I pulled out for that one. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him. In other words, a lot of people. A lot of people. <laughs> For there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people took confidence from the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Yeah. So the culture of death, to us, seems to have hordes of supporters. Yeah. Right? right. I mean, if you look at, you know, media, it seems the media support for the large part is pro abortion. Every seems single that, every single contender for the presidency on the Democratic side is is um you know for abortion. Yeah. And then it seems, you know, just looking out across the landscape of, of our country, mm-hmm. um, if you really get down to the nitty gritty of it and ask people about abortion, yeah. You're you're gonna get for the majority of people at least some acceptance yeah. Of the idea that it's okay to murder children right. inside the womb, right? And that can be that can be discouraging, right? Um, on the flip side, though, mm-hmm. when you start to see, and you know, like I mentioned earlier, when you start to see thousands of Christians coming out and praying, when you start to see you know the sidewalks and more and more people getting a, a burden to come out on the sidewalk and be involved in ministry in that context, especially yeah. considering American Christianity and how we've been taught that. You know, it's all about our comfort and all about the way that we feel to see people stirred up in such a way and and get out of, you know, back to point number three, get out of their complacency is is encouraging to me. And it's encouraging for other people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, one of the means that we get, I say a good portion of our new volunteers is been because they've seen something on Facebook that somebody else has shared or they have a friend that's come out or somebody mm-hmm. came to the prayer walk or they themselves mm-hmm. came to the prayer walk where there were, you know, a good number of people mm-hmm. and they were encouraged, okay, other people are doing this. I can do this. Right. You know, cause the Lord, um, encourages us with other people, you know, right. so-and-so is doing a, you know, if you think about it, missionary work, how do most people get encouraged to do missionary work? It's not that, you know, Jesus comes to them in a dream and calls them to do missionary work. No, it's that they know somebody, they read about somebody mm-hmm. that's out on the mission field, mm-hmm. and that person is doing the work of the ministry, and they're seeing fruit, and they're mm-hmm. encouraged by that, and so they go on the mission field temporarily, and then they feel called permanently right. in the mission field. Yeah, it works yeah. like that on the sidewalk as well. Yeah, and there's, um, I can't remember if it was Elijah or Elisha. I always get that mixed up, but where he's standing, um, uh, discouraged and um and the lord uh whoever he's with maybe he's standing with a i can't remember but i'm sure you will remember this and the lord reveals on the horizon yeah yeah that was elisha of, that was elisha yeah. so obviously i'm messing up the story Do, just briefly talk about that yeah story. so so basically the armies and i forget the king's name sorry uh, the armies of King something. Whoever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> came and surrounded the city where Elijah, or Elisha, sorry, and his servant were staying. Right. And Gehazi was the servant, I yeah, think, of that one. Yeah, it started with right, G. Right. You're okay. right about that. Yeah. And so, yeah, so they look and they see this army, or at least the, the servant looks and sees this army, and he's overwhelmed. Oh, they're right, gonna, terrified. We're going to get we demolished. Can, there's no way we can yeah. beat them. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get demolished. Then Elisha prays and says, Lord, open his eyes. And then the Lord opens his eyes, and he sees Oh, there's this heavenly host, this angel army that surrounds. Yeah. And, uh, of course, they're encouraged. Right, and, and <laughs> right. By the numbers, by victory. the sheer numbers of this heavenly host that God has sent yeah. a heavenly army to to help us. Yeah. And I don't know that I've ever seen that. I, no. He's never rolled back the clouds for me to see, but I know it's true. Yeah. I know they're there, and sometimes I'll visualize that as I'm standing in front of the abortion center and feeling discouraged. I'll remember there is the heavenly host is, is all there, yeah. and, and they are fighting for us, yeah. for 
God's glory and for his purpose, and his purpose is clearly to to save the innocent. Yeah, and, absolutely. And to protect those those babies. Yeah. So um but but I thought that this verse also pointed out um really a very important truth. Okay. That there's really only one number that matters. Yeah. And that number is truly just one. Yeah. The one who stands with us is God. Yeah, absolutely. And if he is with us, that truly is all we need. Yeah, that's absolutely. Not, that's yeah, what we need I, to I, keep I, in mind. One Saturday morning a couple of weeks ago, we were on the sidewalk, me and Francine were there. Mm-hmm. I believe it was me and Francine. Mm-hmm. And maybe one other guy, maybe Kevin was there. Okay. Or these are volunteers mm-hmm. for those who are listening. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were a lot of the pro-abortion people were there already. Yeah. And there were quite a few patients in the parking lot and there are only three of us and it can get overwhelming right. sometimes yeah. when it's yeah. only a few of us and, and then we've <laughs> the police are there and they're right. they're being a hindrance to what we're doing it's just yeah. it's just madness out there sometimes and francine said something like you know there's there's a, there's more of them than there are of us and mm-hmm. i said oh yeah it looks like we got them surrounded <laughs> 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 there's more of them there are more of them numerically but hey yeah we've got the lord on our side we've yeah. got the heavenly host we've got the angel armies yeah and we really got them surrounded. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we have the power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead living in us. Right. And, you know, Romans 8, 31, if mm-hmm. God is for us, who can who be can against be us? Against us? If the yeah. God who made the heavens and the earth is on our side, right. the whole world can be against us. We're still going to have victory. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I want to encourage you guys, you guys who maybe are, Maybe just getting involved, being on the sidewalk at an abortion clinic. Maybe just getting involved in some kind of pro-life ministry. Maybe not yet involved, but want to be involved. You know, we're called to obey God. Mm -hmm. And out of obedience to God, there's going to be fruit that's going to be born. And I want you guys to be encouraged. You know, if you've looked at Cities for Life, you've looked at our numbers, and, you know, sometimes things that God intends to be an encouragement can be a discouragement. And you can think, well, I'm not, I'm not bearing that kind of fruit. I'm not seeing babies saved on a regular basis or whatever. You know what? It's not. Again, it's not about that. Numbers encourage us. Praise God. Take, take, keep track of numbers. That's that's one of the reasons original, originally that the folks started keeping track of numbers, just to to be encouraged to right. see what God is doing. Yeah. Maybe you're not seeing those numbers right now. Again, like I mentioned, you. Know, maybe seek some counsel from some other folks. Reach out to us. You can reach out to me, dparks at citiesforlife.com. I'm not going to claim to to know all the answers for you and, and correct everything that you're doing wrong. I'll give you some suggestions of some of the things that we've seen that are effective on the sidewalk, some mm-hmm. of the things that are not effective. Mm-hmm. Of course, in a biblical framework, not in right. my opinion, mm-hmm. not in some you know boardroom as people sit down and etched out a scheme. No, it's not like that. We want to do things biblically, and we do. Mm-hmm. But biblically, within a biblical framework, what are some of the things that we've seen to be effective? And I'd love to share some of that stuff with you. You can go on our Sidewalks for Life. That's why we established that website, www.sidewalks4life.com. Vicki's writing articles. I've written a few articles. And those are there to help you be effective within a biblical framework, to help you bear fruit. We want to bear fruit for God. It's ultimately not about our glory. It's not about the glory of cities for life. It's about God being glorified. He's right. the he's the Lord of this ministry. He's if you're a Christian, he's the Lord of your life and all the fruit that's born. Just give glory to God for it. Yeah. Celebrate the numbers like they did in the Book of Acts. The yeah. numbers of babies that were saved, or the yeah. number of people the that were saved. People saved right? And as we celebrate the numbers of babies that are saved, mm-hmm. and then give glory to God. It's yeah. all God's doing. What were added to them, all of those who are being saved. Right. By yeah. whom? Yeah. Not by Peter. Right. By God. Right. So yeah. as we see babies saved. We're giving glory to the Lord. It's mm-hmm. God that did it. We're, I'm not stupid enough to believe that I'm so wise and so good that I can figure out how to change a person's heart. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. You can't do it, but mm-hmm. God can do it. Surrender to him and watch him be glorified through your life. So we hope yeah. we, were, we were an encouragement to you guys. Hope you guys will continue to listen, share this podcast. Um, you know, Tell friends to listen. I think it will be an encouragement to them. But until next time, God bless. For love, give me an outlet for gratitude. I know it will cost me my life, but nothing's too precious since I met you.